Hello, Trampoline friends. Welcome to Trampoline Insight. I'm Nuno Marino alongside Stephen Gluckstein, and today we have episode 24. And we're going to talk a little bit more about routine composition, part three. Let's see if it's the last part or not. <laughs> That's right. So if you haven't already, pause, go check out part one and two where we discuss um, a lot of the philosophies that we follow when building these routines. There's a lot of things that we're going to be skipping over um, and a lot of new things that we're going to be diving into as well. Uh, so I believe we're going to be starting off at our youth elite level where we left off. And um, for those international listeners, right, the uh, youth elite level is uh, depending on the gender around around nine zero to ten zero, depending on the age and where you're starting off. So, let's start off with Nuno's document and uh, check out that routine that we left off with. All right, so here we are. Uh, we left off with optional two. So, Nuno, why don't you uh, read us off read us off optional number three and tell us kind of what the goals are in this routine. So after optional two, where we, where we uh, in, insert the Rudyard Pike, that's the first Rudyard that, they, that I usually put on a routine. Uh, then we go to optional two, where I put the second Rudyard, where I put the Rudyard Tuck. And we already explained on episode two why we both start teaching Rudyards first before full brainy. So why don't you go check that out if you're curious about that. But the optional three would be um, Rudyard Pike, back tuck, Rudyard Tuck, back straight, half out Pike, double tuck, half out Tuck, full brainy, brainy Pike, brainy straight, doesn't matter. Uh, half half or double A, so that would and be that's optional, uh, optional three. three. That's optional yeah. three, correct? Sorry, uh, so that would be optional three for uh, youth elite 11 12s. Um, and that has a 9 8 difficulty, which is, I think, beyond uh, not beyond, I think it's inside their cup their capabilities. It's a it's a, a, a good routine for that for that age. Uh, I'm not gonna de deny I have an athlete that is now 13 that is doing this routine consistently already moving to the next one actually she's doing already optional four uh, with the 10 five consistently too but uh, this can be like this can be the limit here of the of the of the 11 12 i think this is where people cap when whenever they do the rudy out that's where they start uh, moving on to either uh, usually 13 14 or, or or at the older ages of of 11 12 basically that's what i feel I like I think I think it's it's worth noting here, right? If you take a peek, this athlete almost took a step back to take uh, two steps forwards, right? So mm -hmm. this athlete has a double back pike. They've they yeah. have probably a great double back pike that they've been doing yep. already for many many optionals. Can, but it's can not you in zoom in? Can you zoom in a little bit more on on those routines? Yeah, perfect, perfect. Yeah, I think it's it's a that's a great point, Stephen. Yeah, this athlete mm -hmm. was already doing the four doubles in the middle. And we removed one of the doubles so we can put the Rudy out and then we'll add that double later. And let me, let me ask you a question because when I look at this routine, for me, it's not necessarily worth to have the back full after the half out. I would put, um, I don't know, if a back pike there mm -hmm. um, or, or something else. Is that something that you do on purpose or just something yeah. different? Or so I'll be honest, I'll be honest. I usually didn't put the back full there, but then I saw other people putting the back full because it's not a, it's not a, how do you say a standard connection, half out back, full. Right. something, something a little bit odd. Right. But I saw other kids doing it so easy. I was like, you know, I think it's something that I can challenge my kids with. And then in the end, they actually ended up doing it really well because I feel like, uh, um, it's not easy for them to do half out back full. The transition on speeds and, and rotations, it's very different. But then they end up doing it very well and they enjoy it. So I, I kept it there. But I, it's, it's funny. I didn't have it there. And I started doing it because I saw other kids doing it. And I thought it was a little bit funky. And I was like, mm, okay, let, let's keep it there. So right now I have it increased a little bit on DD. And, and it makes them, it's a, little bit, it's a little bit of a challenge for them that they enjoy, I feel. So I kept it there. <laughs> Yeah. I, you know, I'm just thinking, you know, I've, I stayed away from that connection because it's a little bit tough to go from double to single and then to add a twisting off of the bed. However, you know, I start to think uh, and ponder that maybe that might be a intro connection for the half out to half half. Right. So they yep. go from a double into yep. a twisting skill. 
but it can also make bad habits, right? So you have to Correct. teach it right. Otherwise, it can make bad habits going into the half half. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think I think you 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 hit it right there on the head, like you like you usually say, right? Uh, if you teach it correctly, it can be very, very important for the future. But if you let bad habits happen, the turn happen a little bit too early, all those things, then it can create problems for the future as well. And, and like I said, I still have Brandy Pike in the end, but I think here I, I, I would have put Brandy straight easily at nine skill and start with the Brandy yep. straight at nine skill consistently. Yep. And we, we talked about that in the last one about setting, yep. setting up um, – for the last skill and also right so and this is this is something that i really want to get across to a lot of uh coaches when i see some 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 weird connections and routines at 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 nationals and regionals in, in here in the u.s um some people are just throwing skills in there for difficulty and they you know it's you have to take that one step back to take two steps forward. You have to do an easier difficulty, right? So like if, if this were my routine, I wouldn't have that back full in. That would be the same difficulty as the previous routine. It would both be nine, seven. Correct. And so, um, it, and they'd be doing a harder routine with the same amount of difficulty, but then you yep. see people are like, Oh, it's the same amount of difficulty. Is it worth it? So then they start putting in back fulls and Rudy ninth scale. Right. And, and then that mm-hmm. routine gets harder. And then they're like, Oh, well, I guess we need to keep working on this routine um because it's not good enough well if you had just taken a step backwards and not put all those hard skills in and yes maybe you did less difficulty built the foundation of that routine and then started to fill in skills then it, you know you wouldn't get stuck there and you wouldn't have yeah. to be adding you know one tenth here one tenth there i i just feel i i feel like the coaches uh, worry a little bit too much about the kids being competitive at this stage right and then they want to add every little bit of difficulty that they can and then the routine doesn't, it's not clean enough to be competitive anymore. Because I, I like, like you said, putting the Rudy at nine skill there, either going Rudy half half or Rudy double A, I think it screws the, the routine a little bit too much. I think it screws it up a little bit too much. It messes it up, messes it up a little bit too much, I think. So, all right, so let's, let's jump to, forward. So, let's talk about but, this optional four of your Yeah, and then, we'll go, and then we'll go to your document. Yeah, yep. so optional four, the next step would be adding the double tuck on second skill and then having the double pike on sixth skill in the middle of the half out. So, that would be Rudy out pike, double tuck, Rudy out tuck back straight, half out pike, double pike, half out tuck full, brandy straight, half half tuck, or brandy pike. I still have pike there, but I'm going to switch that to straight. So, that this, seems. At this point, yeah. they're, they're doing the half-half. They're not doing the double-A anymore, or is it still sometimes pick and choose? I, I think still sometimes can be the double-A, no doubt. My, uh, I, I think the double-A can always be a skill that you put there, but I, I really would enjoy if it was the half-half because the next skill that will go to the middle will be that half-half. <laughs> so that half-half has to go to the middle and half-half pike has to go to the end, So which means that half-half needs to start being consistent enough to be there as a skill in the, in, in, in the end. Do you ever do, and I think once we jump to mine, we'll, I think we'll see this routine, but do you ever do an interim routine between the 9, 8, and the 10, 5, where they'll do Rudy out, back let, tuck, Rudy out, back layout, and then the four doubles in the middle to, to Bernie straight double A? Uh, I, do, I do in practice sometimes, yes. I do in practice sometimes. I usually don't compete it, though, but, yeah, sometimes I do. Gotcha. All right, so let's take a look at the routines that I have prepared over on my side. All right. So next, um, I have in my document also included a lot of like training routines. And so this is where we really start to incorporate the front skeletons. Now that you're doing, the athletes are doing that second Rudy out four out of the five front skills are doubles. Um, and so that's almost capped out. So the next step that we're going to be doing is starting to fill in those back doubles, right? Which is what you saw. You put that double tuck in the middle of the half outs. And then eventually, Nuno, you put the double tuck between the Rudy outs and then the half outs. So we just start filling in here and there the, mm-hmm. um, the back doubles. So this is where um, the athletes start training, um, at least for me, a lot of those front skeletons a lot, so, that, a lot. Uh, so that they build a strong foundation because honestly, this two Rudy out and two half out routine is going to go from nine, eight all the way to 11, eight. They're going to be doing the same structure, just filling in those back skills for a long time. So this front skeleton is super important. So, Absolutely. And, and, and I would like to say, I don't have the four skeletons in my, in my document. I've, I only have routines that I usually compete, but I, 
Forward skeletons are part of my practice every single day, every single day. And they do a lot more forward skeletons than they do full routines. A lot more, right. a lot every day. And I, I think it's, I think it's comparable to, to like, if you see artistic um, athletes training, they'll do the, their dance. And then instead of their tumbling passes, maybe they'll do a couple shuttle runs or they'll do mm -hmm. like a round up back cancer back layout. So they get the, the timing, you know, of, or, or and the stamina of their routines. And I guess you can also, you know, compare it to, to tumble power tumblers who might do, you know, round off handspring high layout, Whip, whip, yeah. whip, you know, to, to another Just high the layout. structure, structure of the passes and same thing for us. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Bingo. All right. So here's um, my next routine that we incorporate. And it's kind of like that question that I asked you about if you put those four doubles, because that's where we'll yep. put them first, because the athlete is so used to doing um, those, those four doubles for so long. And also the Rudy out it's still a difficult connection to, to connect um, in and out of because um, there's a lot of twisting at the end, not much time to spot. They don't really have a lot of time to catch their breath. So usually I find it easier to put those doubles last. The downside, however, is that they just spent a lot of energy at the beginning and they're going to have to, it's going to be tough. They're going to, they're this right here, this, this, um, eighth skill, the back pike, they're not going to have a lot of height. They're not going to have a lot of energy. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, this is where I usually start, and then I'll go to the um, to. So what, the why don't you read? Why don't back. you read that that routine for those that are only listening? Yeah. Why don't you read the routine that yeah. you have? Yeah. So there? that routine, this routine is Rudy out pike, back pike, Rudy out tuck, back layout, half out pike, double back tuck, half out tuck, double back pike, Brandy straight, double layout, or half and half out, which is very comparable to the routine yeah. um, that that you were discussing. Um, yeah. Can, so can you go up? Can you yeah. go up a little bit? I'm, I'm yeah, just sorry. curious. I'm just curious. Yeah. So what do you do with that double pike going after the Rudyard tuck? I just feel like I'm guessing it's the next step. Whenever you either do double pike there and put the full at the bottom. Is so that what this is, no, this is, um, and maybe I've had a, I met my difficulty wrong, but I think this routine, the Rudy out back, mm -hmm. Rudy out back, four doubles, Bernie straight double A adds up to 10, four. Yeah. That, that is it makes 10, sense. Five? And then, when you, and then no, 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 so I think it's yeah. correct. So but, the then, but then you have, needs, but you see, you, the have the double needs, uh, you have double pike after Rudy out tuck. That's right, my, so, my, that's my question. So, so here's the thing. So for, for level 10 to junior elite female, they need a 10, five difficulty, right? So in order oh. to get that one extra 10th, we have to put in a back full somewhere instead of a layout. Got it. So what we could do, we could either do Rudy out back, Rudy out back full, which would mm, not yeah, be smart. Yeah, or we can throw yeah. a double back there and then put the back full, full eighth. Right. See, so, okay. and so it doesn't just, have to be like it could be it could be double back tuck as well. So yeah. the athlete might do the, the another routine option: Rudy out back pike, Rudy out yeah. double back, D half double out tuck, double yeah. back, half out back full Bernie double A, or half okay. half. Okay, and, and, and that, that makes a little bit pike. more sense. That makes a little bit more sense to me, and that, and I'll explain why because uh, I do think that the Rudy out tuck is harder than the pike. I think we talk a little bit, a little bit about this, right? So uh, you put the Rudy out pike, then the connection off the Rudy out tuck, even, even right now with the ads that I have doing this, it's still their hardest connection is coming off the Rudy out tuck. I think putting a double yep. pike there, or it would be hard. I think double tuck, probably doable, but I still enjoy it better between the Rudy outs. I feel like the Rudy out pike comes from a bounce, has more time in the end for them to see that double before the connection than the Rudy out tuck. But I have nothing against it. All kids are different. I'm just, I was just curious because I would, have, I would have put the tuck there and then the pike later. That's all. Right. And, and, and as I thought, you know, as I'm speaking about it, you know, I would just, what I was doing in the, in the, um, the document was just trying to flip flop skills. Uh -huh. yeah, but yeah, honestly, yeah. honestly, it would probably be double tuck. And, you know, and it, it really depends on, on the level and the strength of the athlete of at this point. Of course. At this point, if the Rudy outs are good, maybe that double tuck will go second because it's going to go there. You know, if the, if the Rudy outs aren't as, as strong, maybe, then maybe they need later. that break between the Rudy outs Absolutely. to separate that twisting. All right, Absolutely. so let's take out the next routine. Um, so at, by now, the athlete has two Rudy outs, two half outs, and both double backs, or all three double backs. If all doing three double, double backs, yep. And regardless if that half half is, um, while they're doing this 10-4, 10-5 routine, um, the same one that's on your document, um, or same skills, just a little different order, yeah, little, little they different should order, already yeah. have their half half to feet 
um, without a spot onto the mat and we're starting to work the connection. By the time they're doing this routine, already that half half needs to be starting to to be prepared for the next routine. Yeah. And and one one little thing now that you said that at this when they're doing this routine, that full brandy drill should be going because also because yes. Because that will be the next next four skill going in. So has if they have two root yachts in their routine, their root yachts are consistent enough for the full brandy drills to be going. And maybe even already some full brandies to feed, depending on how long they do this routine. Okay. If they're doing this routine for three or four months, that full brandy maybe should be going to feed already. Not connected yet, but but uh, getting there, getting ready for it to be the next one. So usually, usually I at this point I'm I the full brandy for me, and maybe this is just a bias because it took me a while, is a, a difficult skill to learn that that front full early to pike and not, you know, because I teach full Bernie pike first and we'll get into mm -hmm. the reasons why, but that, that quick twist with almost a blindness to it and then spotting yep. and duck under, it takes a long time yep. to prepare. So the, they'll start doing the, the drills, a lot of the drills, fold the flat back to see, drop the, to feed a stomach uh now but for me the athlete won't probably start doing full brainy to feet until the half half is it half half tuck is in the routine because oh, there's okay. still another step the half half pike will go into the routine before they put the full brain so the athletes will completely max out um nine doubles before they go to the before full they do it and 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 i i'm okay with that but for example what you said full to flat back i have my developmental kids doing that right yeah. Not, so that, not, that's, not that's, that's, not, that's, they, they not, do. that's not being started now. They're my, the, the level sevens, level sixes and sevens exactly. are doing pull downs to, to flat Full back. downs. It's important. Um, Tuck back straight, seat drop, the straight to those, seat drop. I think it's good for them to know how to control that. I want to go to back. I want to go to back. I want to go to seat drop. I want to go to seat drop. They are in control of that movement. So, and, and so this is, the reason why they're also doing it is because it's a drill for Rudy ball outs, Rudy out. So they already have experience doing those full downs. Um, but we don't start doing full to stomach, full duck under, I guess they start doing it, but they won't do full brandies to feet. They won't start branding it down and, and until that. they have this next step. And this next yeah, step and is uh, a step backwards before mm -hmm. we go two steps forwards. The difficulty is nine, nine, and it's back to the, uh, Rudy out pike back pike Rudy out tuck back layout start. The only difference is now the middle piece we go half out pike half and half out tuck half out tuck and then depending on how strong that half half is there uh -huh. maybe the double back pike will come eighth maybe it'll just be a back tuck and then finishing yeah. with the brandy half uh, double layout. Yep. And, and I think this is a very important step. And this is, this is what we've been trying to say from the beginning. Okay. It's, it's, it's okay to go a little bit behind on DD and put these connections in the middle there because this is going to make them stronger in the long run because then Steven is going to put that half half pike in the end and they just gain another skill over there that they weren't doing before. But for make for them to be able to make this routine and I would I, in my opinion I would use this routine for training only. I would not compete this. But right. again, it, no. it, it it is a routine. But it's okay to be compete. What why not? It's it's okay to compete that routine. I have no problem with com people competing that routine. But I think it's important to but, to, to understand that you know sometimes we go a little bit be, a little bit back to get three steps forward after that. This, this routine might be competed in a local competition in your gym or a neighboring gym where it's like, hey, you know, you've been working on a half half, let's try to compete it, uh, you know, for the first time. And, and if they just learned it maybe in, the, in three to four weeks prior, right? So it all depends on timing when they're learning during the season. But if, if sometimes they might compete a weird routine just to get confidence and experience with certain skills. Yeah. Um, so this wouldn't be a routine that's competitive nationally or even regionally, I guess, um, or definitely like I international, said, not internationally. I, I don't but have, not internationally, but I would have no problem with them competing this routine. Seriously, it has nothing wrong with it. Let's say, let's say the half half tuck is getting good, but the, the half half pike is not ready to go to the end there. Right? They, they can do the double right. layer. What's the yep. problem? It has yeah. all the skills that they need to have. And then here's the, I think this might be the same exact routine that the you wrote, tuck. right? The double tuck in the middle. So Rudy Al Pike, double back tuck, Rudy Al Tuck, back layout, a little lay, uh, break there. That's very mm -hmm. crucial that that fourth skills, a layout. Yep. It gives a break between the beginning doubles and the middle doubles. Then we go to half out Pike, 
half and half out tuck, half out tuck, back pike, burning straight double layout. Um, and honestly, that back pike can be a double back pike. Um, it really depends on the athlete's strength and age, right? Yep. If this is like a younger mm-hmm. person, they might not be strong enough yet. But can be this is a this is a new this is a, <laughs> yeah this is a new jump, right? They're putting that double back seconds and they're putting the half half. Um, yep. And then at this point, also and, and, they can start putting the half half pikes last. But I I I'm not a big fan of it. I mean, it, yes, it gets them exposed to putting half half pike in the routine but they'll never put half, half pike last skill. Last skill will almost always be a straight skill. Yeah. But, but uh, I think for the beginning, it's important for that half, half pike to be there, you know, because that half, half pike, it's not so easy to connect. It's not so easy to land straight in the beginning when they're not very powerful. And I think it's very important to go to that end, to the end for a little bit. And then after it goes to the end, then it goes to wherever it belongs on the routine. So for me, putting half, half pike last skill would be like a training routine. It would be because honestly, if they've already done this piece, this middle piece, they're connecting half out pike, half, half tuck, half out tuck in the middle of their optional where they're already lower and tired, then they are probably pretty close to connecting that half, half pike also to some doubles because the skills aren't, it just needs more strength, but it doesn't need that much more, more technical knowledge to connect a half, half in and out. It's still turning almost off of the bed and branding at the end. So that's strength is an important step. I can tell you right now, I have an athlete doing this routine here. Okay. And she's Mm -hmm. working on the half, half in the middle, which she did last practice. But for example, the half, half pike is not ready yet. It really is not because she's not strong enough to have the speed to finish. She keeps bending the legs or one leg at the end because she doesn't have the power, but she can do the half, half tuck in the middle. Easy, 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 but she cannot do the half, half pike still. So... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess it just, you have to take it. And depend, it's very dependent. On Depends the, on, the, uh, on the, athlete. the athlete, right? Yeah. Um. So for me, right after this routine, this is they would go to the eleven uh, zero, um, which is that double back pike there, right? So the Rudy out pike, double back tuck, Rudy out tuck, layout, half out pike, half half tuck, half out tuck, double pike, Bernie straight, double layout. Double right mm-hmm. and and i think it's i think it's worth noting because i've seen some people put the rudy in and the coaches are like why not two extra tens 11 two <laughs> right and i think when you're building these routines right so number one most importantly you have to think of their development right are they yeah. going to be putting a, a a rudy ninth i mean not till they're a senior elite doing 17 one or higher that they might do a rudy out ninth you know, it, it's not likely it's not common. So I don't think it's necessary. And also you have to think it, competitively what's going to get the greatest score. Okay. Yeah. You might add two tenths on, on difficulty, but what are you going to lose on execution? What are you going to lose yeah. on time of flight? What are you going to lose on horizontal displacement? No one goes up and does a perfect Rudy on the X. I, I don't think any athletes do it of any caliber. So and I think I think it's yeah. important for people to see that this routine here demonstrates everything and the rhythmic and the music that the routine should have. Okay, it starts with very hard, yep. very hard. Give them a break right here. The middle hard. again, hard, and then another break later after the double pike, and then fi- final skill, boom. And I think that's right. a very important rhythmic that we that the, any routine routine to have. And right now the easy skills are back straight, brainy straight, but one day are going to be a half out pike. Half hot pack is going to be on nine skill for a long time because it's a, a, a skill for them to breathe. At this level, is not, but at that at that level, half hot pack is going to be a skill right. for them to breathe, right? Or or the the full full pike on the fourth skill, for example, it's going to be a skill for them to breathe before they go yep. through the middle, right? There's there's that's important for the routines to have that rhythm. Yep, absolutely. That fourth and ninth skill like you said, are going to be even at the highest level, right? Even highest if level, yep. tri- triff, half triff, triff, and then either half, half, or, you know, full, 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 full yes, right? or full, half, full half, pike, or which half I know it's, at, this, yeah. at this point seems like a difficult skill, but when but, you have Miller's and Miller pluses and half, half triff talk and half and half out triffist pike, right? So the full, full, correct. Is, the full, full is a, is a, is a, a, a safe skill. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So then the next routine, and this is where once this athlete is, uh, starting to do this routine for me, that's 
maybe the last routine, maybe the 11 zero at this point, when the athlete has the half and half out talk in the routine, that's when the athlete will start doing the full brainies to feet and getting it ready. So, because they have one step interim in between. So then See, but at this I, I think, point, I think there is no problem if they do it to feet earlier. Okay. If they're ready to do it, I, I don't, I don't think we should put a limitation yeah. only, only right now they should be doing it to feet. I think it really depends on the development of the athlete. I think it's important not to start working the full brain is until the root yachts are consistent. I think that's the yeah. main point. Do not, do not uh, teach full brain is and root yachts at the same time. And, the, and it's, the, the rule is simple. They have the same amount of flip with the same amount of twisting, just different places. It's very easy for the athlete's mind to just go, I want to do a, a root yacht and boom, a full goes in. I've seen it happening mm -hmm. several times in the past. Okay. Do, so, I, I don't think we should put a limitation. Only now they should be able to do it to feet, but they should only no, start doing it whenever suggested. the root yachts are consistent. Yes. Or vice versa. If you start with the full brainies, do not start the root yachts until the full brainies are consistent. Mm -hmm. Simple as and, that. And, 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 and for me, I have two youth elite girls right now, 13, 14. Um, I, well, there's three of them. Two of them, uh, skip, not skipped over, but – they practiced but never competed the 11 or 8 routine. They're full brannies. They, they learned them so so easily and so quickly that they mm -hmm. went to the full branny layout routine before they got the half-half pike in the routine. But another yep. girl was having some 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 uh, a longer journey, let's call it, in learning the full branny. Full branny. So yep. she it went to happen. the 11-8 routine, you know. And um, so that's why it, I think it, de it depends. Some some athletes learn that, that full twist in the first – flip it of a, a double somersault easily some athletes have a, have a more difficult time um so here i think and and ju just to finalize and i think that the half half like we talked on the on the last episode the arabian is so hard to do well that some athletes do take a little bit longer to do that step and okay and that should not put a break on the full range if the root yachts are consistent okay they can in my opinion they can do both at the same time i have athletes doing both at the same time would i prefer that the half halves would go at the same time as the root yachts yes i would prefer because then we can work full brandies and full falls at the same time, which are very, very similar. And I like that, right? But not all the times it's how we want. So <laughs> again, we should not limit one skill because another one is not yet done, right. I think. Yeah, no, I think, I think it's just, you want to be careful learning too many front skills at Absolutely. the same time or back skills at the time. But Absolutely. front skills and back skills being differently can be learned at the same time, right? It's just, it's kind of like a yeah. magnet, right? North and North don't go right north and south front skills and back skills can match up and then you yeah. know you want to stay away from learning too many front skills at the same time or back skills so then all right so let's take a look at the next routine it's 11 4 or 11 8 depending on uh, where you do so 11 4 is kind of like a training routine to get ready and strong enough for the 11 8 and it goes rudy out pike half half pike so we put that that skill second because they need a lot of heights like we said it's a hard skill to bring those legs around um mm -hmm. straight you need a lot of strength and a lot of height for that skill then they'll go Rudy out tuck. And then, like we said, that fourth skill should be a breather. So it, when they're in training, when they're learning this routine, they just did two of their hardest skills that they know Rudy out pike and half and half out pike. Um, and then they did a Rudy out tuck. They're probably going to need a breather. So it's smart to put a layout there, even though you're excited and you're like, you could do 11, eight, that's going to be so much difficulty, right? Bring it back so they can get in good habits. Um, and then after the layout, they do the same ending, half out pike, half and half out tuck, half out tuck, double back pike, burning straight, double layout. And um, if you put this double back tuck for a skill too early, they're going to lose height. And this middle piece, half out, half and half out, gonna half out, is going to be rushed. And they're going to get in terrible habits. And those habits, that half out, half and half out, half out, if they're men or if they're going to be international senior women, that's going to compare to their Triffis Pike half and half out Triffis Tuck, Triffis Tuck. So if they're yeah. going to get in habits uh, there, it's just it's going to domino effect to the rest of their career. And, and, that, and I would say it's important here to note that look, look at the fourth scout and it's still the same. I think that's yep. very important. The Rudy out, the Rudy out, the half out, the half out, and the brainy straight. Those are your five forward skills, and they're still the same. If they have not touched, and we consistently train that forward skeleton every day, every day. In yeah. my opinion, still, even 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 with this eleven eight, right? They they've pretty much mastered the skeleton. Still train it, right? 
And you can even. I'm, I'm not uh, sure. I'm not sure I put uh, this routine in my in my in my in my file. I think I might have so. jumped straight to the other. But these are routines that I still do with my athletes. Okay, even even if we're already working on the full brandies and the connection of the full brandies, all they they are still practicing this routine and they will go through these routines because that half half pike on second skill is probably one of the most important things you want to have there before you move on to the rudy out on on uh, on first to the full brandy on the first skill sorry right so i i don't remember if i put it i think i did but i don't remember if i put it we'll check it out later so let's we'll we'll, t- we'll take a check uh t- take a check we'll check it out in a second um just one more thing with this the, the front skill point that you were talking uh talking to a good drill and we talked about not ruining certain connections um, a good drill is to do front skeleton with just certain back skills. So like, let's say, for example, you have an athlete that does, all right, you guys, let's work on the last six. And they do those last six great every time. And then you say, okay, let's do optional. And it's like pfft, last, you know, that fifth and sixth skill, you know, goes to crap. All right. Some things you can do is do a skeleton just with the half and half out tuck or even the double back pike. So Rudy out, back pike, Rudy out, back pike half out, half and half out, half out, right? So they can get a little bit tired, a little bit exposed, and they can still have, you know, exposure to to that piece being a little bit tired. Um, so so with that in yeah. mind, that reminds me of something because I have two athletes that are going through uh, the earlier routines there and where they have to connect that Rudy out, double tuck, Rudy out, right? And and sometimes they, they, they need a little push. So I, I let them do the forward scout to the double tuck. So they do the first three as the routine and then they go forward scout from that on, from the, that mm-hmm. point on, on the routine. It's like, so I thought it was funny that you brought that point up. They're doing, that's, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a great learning tool. All right, so let's take a look at your uh, routines here. You watch that so we go one. from yeah. the 10-5. So then we have the 11-2. Oh, so you put the I even put half, the half, 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 half second. So I can put the half, half pike at the end. So, but the previous routine that they did, did they have, oh, they didn't have tuck. half and half out in the, the middle yet. No, but again, but again, they do like yours, okay? They have the, they have to connect the half, half tuck in the middle there somewhere before, and mm-hmm. then it goes second. Like I said, these are not all the training routines that I do. This is what I would compete, okay? And I, and I think that's a routine that you can compete, but is it perfect? No, but I think that that routine allows you to have the half half pike at the end with the half half tuck on second place. Now you could switch that double tuck to second place and put the half half tuck in the, on sixth in place. In the middle, yeah, totally okay. I I don't see a problem at all with that at all. It's just yeah. this way you kind of prepare them to put the half half pike there wherever it goes on optional two. Simple. So as if that. they're not quite strong enough to do the half half pike second, but they still learn the connection of the half half second. Correct. Yeah, but again, I see. I see nothing wrong with you with mm-hmm. both ways, in my opinion. Yeah, we could, you could do it both ways. Yep, and and you still have that same same skeleton and same resting yep. on the fourth, resting on the ninth. Yep. All right, yep. so let's take a look at this twelve zero routine. Interesting. So you have this. It's eleven eight routine that we just talked about. The the half half bike second. It's a little um, bit more pushed put, than yours. You put that. You put the half half. The half half. Uh, so let me read it out for those that are just listening. Yeah. It's Rudy out pike, half and half out pike. Rudy out tuck, half and half out tuck. Half out pike, double back tuck, half out tuck, double back pike. Briny straight, and then either full full tuck or half and Rudy out tuck. So okay. let me I, let me ask you a couple of questions here because this is maybe in, in my world this is a little unorthodox. A little but too I fast. Can see some, a little too fast. I can see. I can see. No, I can see some 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 interesting things here, right? Because I think one of the things is like I've been doing similar routines for so long. It's you know, I, it, it's fun to be exposed to to new things. So let me let me dig into your brain a little bit. What's the reasoning between putting half half tuck fourth and not sixth? So putting that reactor. So- yeah. Okay. So I, I think if you're going to put it six, then you need to put a breather there. Right. So I didn't want, I, I, I wanted that jump to be a little bit faster. So I was thinking, where would they be, where are they be able to connect it to easier after the Rudyat or, or later when they're more tired after the half out. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I, I, again, I don't see any, anything wrong with one or the other. It really is going to really depend on the athlete that you have in front of you. 
you know, it's very possible, very possible that whenever I've had athletes getting here at this stage, that I'll have to switch them. <laughs> the double tuck going to fourth place and the, and the half half going there because uh, they might not be able to do it. But I think it, uh, it starts creating a, um, a connection there that they'll have a lot, which is drift bike, half half bike, drift tuck, half half tuck. It will be or the opposite. You can switch the half halves because a lot of people, which I never done when I jump, but a lot of people do drift bike, half half tuck, preparing for the half drift, and then drift tuck, half half bike, and they will stay there. So I don't know. When I, when I was building that, I was like, I think that might be an interesting step. I may be wrong. Okay, I may have to adjust yeah. it. So it just seems to me, it seems like a, a lot of twisting the, at the end of the Rudy out into the half and half out and then into the Rudy out then into and another half and half out. And but it, at this stage, it I hope... give them much of a breather for it right? No, you are correct. You are correct. But at this stage, I'm hoping that the half out bike will be a little bit of a breather for them already. Maybe not. We shall yeah. see. They're still so, so, years old here. So my, my next question is here, do you teach uh, full, full tuck first before full, full pike? Uh, I do. I teach, I teach yeah. both at the same time, honestly. When they duck okay. under, when they duck under, they duck under tuck or pike first, whatever it's better on the drill. And then I alternate all the time, tuck, pike, tuck, pike. I ask them tuck, they show me tuck, I ask them pike, they show me pike. Now, you ask me, which one do they do to feet first? It really depends on the athlete. And I'll tell you, with the full brandy, for example, I had a girl now that the first one that I asked was pike because the pike drill was much, much better than the tuck. But I usually start with the tuck first. I usually start everything with the tuck first. But again, gotcha. depend on the athlete that you have in front of you. And, you, and that last skill, the, that last skill can easily be a double leg. Don't get me wrong. Okay, if the athlete is not even close to be right to full full or half full, because I think half fulls are even harder than full fulls. Okay, so but they they at this point I think they learn half Rudy much faster because they have the Arabian, correct. they have the half in for half, half out. They have the Rudy outs because they've been doing them now Rudy out pike and tuck for a long but time. But they're not so, so easy uh, to connect though. They're not so easy no, to connect. They, re no, no, they no, require no, no. a lot and of power. You, Yes, absolutely. Require a lot of power and the tenth skill to do a tenth skill is is is, is pretty tough. <laughs> the reason why I do tenth skill is because we can do a lot of them to the mat first, and they don't have to connect anything after it. So even if For the sure. landing is a little bit They're shorter, it's a, now are they more tired? For sure, I get it. They're they're a lot more tired when they get there. But uh, this routine is not built one one time this routine has to be built by parts first before after we go right. from the other side there's a lot of parts to be built first but then, but then start adding you think okay so half and really out tuck it's hard ninth or tenth skill it's like well then you start to think well where else would you put it and there's nowhere else to put it you're not, not gonna at this put stage. second skill not at this level and not in at age. this level all right and, and so again like i said it could be it could be a double a it could easily be a double a i think because uh, the half Rudy or the full full might not be really ready yet. I think the full ready will probably might go in before the full full or the half Rudy go in. And I think All it's right, important so, to keep to keep yeah. an eye or to keep a or to give the opportunity if they're ready. You know, we see a lot mm -hmm. of we see a lot of athletes in this country doing full fulls before they do half halves. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Dangerous game. <laughs> All right. So let's take a jump to the next, look at these next uh, two routines. Now we have the incorporation of a full branny or a full and See, half we, out. We bring it pike. down a lot there. See, we bring it down a lot there so we can put the full branny. We go yeah, from, so we we go from, from one single skill to two single skills again. We went from we do a yeah. couple changes. Yep. So we went from nine doubles and the, uh, the only single being ninth. Yep. Right to eight doubles, eight doubles, and we have, yep. and we have two singles in the first six, yep. um, and that's what we just kind of talked about taking a step backwards to take two steps forward. So the routine and, and, they and, have here, and I, and I think this is the most complicated step as a coach, okay? Because all, all the connections that we did it before, like for example, the Rudyard Pike half half Pike that we both think it's important, we both have on our routines, right? It kind of, it kind of it's a little bit destroyed here with the beginning of the full ready because I don't think it's a very a uh, smart step to go full brandy half half pike right away whenever whenever no. they get in okay not in the oh, first no. routine so this routine here in the middle it's going to change everything that they were doing before okay we go back to doubles in the middle of the rudyards like they did before but, uh, until they can go a, a bigger jump on the next routine which the, the, this routine in the middle is really like maybe three steps back so we can give five steps forward on the next one but uh, that full brandy really needs some consistent there before we even get anything 
Close that's a lot of that's a lot of stepping. Three, is a lot three of stepping. step back, thirty-two steps back, and then eighty-seven steps. Eighty-seven forward. steps forward. <laughs> yes, exactly. All right, so let's talk about this uh, routine for those that are listening and not looking here. So we got full Branny Pike or full and half out Pike, however you like to refer to it. Back straight, Rudy out Pike, double back tuck, Rudy out tuck, back Pike, half out Pike, half and half out tuck, half out tuck. And then at this point, you have a plethora of skills to choose from, or you don't at this point, right? Maybe you do, yeah. maybe you don't. Maybe, maybe you, you, maybe you know, you you're stuck. Maybe it's the uh, double A, maybe it's half, half pike, half and Rudy out, full, full, right? It, yep. And it, it's not, at this point, again, it's still about progression. It's not about degree of difficulty, right? You want to, you want to start implementing what you plan on doing in the future. Right. Yeah, and, and I if, think this is the hard part too because it really depends on the athlete that you have in front of you. You know, some athletes may be very strong; they'll be able to do a full full pike there, and other athletes and, probably will have to stick to the double leg mm-hmm. and not even a half yeah. half pike they'll be able to do there because of how tired they are when they get there. And I had I had a a, a first year senior lead athlete that was doing and practicing trying to do the full full last, and I would say six out of 10 times she would land short and do like a front yep. tuck out of it and our front pike out of it. And so we kept training it, but we would compete the double A. So we would still practice double A out tenth skill as well. So, and I think it's important that we talked about earlier. I think at this level, it's still important that when this athlete is practicing this, this routine that they don't forget the last routine either, that they still practice multiple routines that they have yeah. two or three routines to go on. Right. And yeah, at this absolutely. point, once they change this, this skeleton, once they put full Bernie Pike for, first, I wouldn't say you practice the Rudy out Pike skill for that, that last routine with Rudy out Pike first, but maybe you have a super easy full Bernie routine with a back straight back Pike and back tuck in it. And then maybe yeah. you have a kind of easy routine with like this, with the back straight and the back Pike. And then, you know, you, you have multiple routines in that sense. Um, not necessarily once you start changing the first skill, I don't think necessarily it's a great idea to be messing around with, with first skill different. It's good sometimes to have them exposed to different things because if an athlete does synchro, I, I've had some athletes that go to full brainy first skill and then they haven't done the Rudy out Pike first skill mm-hmm. in a while. And then all of a sudden their singer partner doesn't have full brainy and they have to do Rudy out Pike first skill. And they start to like poop themselves because they're so afraid, it, you know, it's, I think so. I wouldn't recommend necessarily training it for comp competition but maybe doing a fruity out start here and there yeah, uh, but actually that point that you just touched i think is one of the most important things at, at this level these these kids need to be uh, exposed to all kinds of connections it's very very important and even for you as a coach you'll see which ones they will adapt faster and which ones they won't because sometimes this is just one path for progression Okay, mine is one, yours is a different one, and they're not very different. They have slight differences in them, okay? There are probably other people that have much, much different paths for progression than, than we do, okay? And that doesn't mean that at the end, we're going to meet ourselves all doing this close to the same routines, okay? So it, it, everyone is different. Everyone adapts to certain types of connections different, okay? The, the full, I think the half out full is one really good, good, interesting one. Not everyone can do half out full. And then other people just do half out full like they do better than the back straight, for example, right? So it's just everyone evolves at their own time and everyone has a certain preference. And I think it's important that we listen to that. We look, we observe, oh, okay, that's beneficial for them. That one is not so beneficial. So let me do a couple of changes here. All right. So my next question for you, we saw that full Brandy Pike skill first. Two questions. Why don't we see full Bernie straight first skill? And why don't we see Trivis Tuck at this point first skill? And uh, go. I, I think we do I think we do see full Bernie straight sometime. Okay. If we look right. at the at the cert, cert, certain certain coaches prefer to have the full Bernie straight than the full so Bernie. Why don't we see it from your from your document is what I oh, meant. Oh from Not my from, document. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Well, first of all, and I think I, I I've said this before, I teach the straight positions different than I teach the, the pike and the tuck. I, for me, I think it's important because I, I so I learned full brennies the the old way, brenny in full out. Okay. And you 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 can see the bed the entire time when you do the skill that way. But 
the way the judges judge right now, they they need to see a, a good position. They need to see a tuck position. So the tuck and the pike kind of shift to a full in branny out or half out, right? Where you have the time of finishing the turn slightly early and then tucking on the way up and going to the position, right? Tuck or pike, okay? So I teach those as we saw full in branny out. But then when I go to the straight, I treat it as a separate skill because I believe it's fundamentally safer to teach the other way. You can see the trampoline the entire way when you see brand, when you do brand in full out through the cruise, you see the trampoline the entire way and your control is 10 times, 10 times more controlled than when you do full in brand new out. Because if you think about the full in brand new out straight, you do full in, you finish here because you have the technique that you did for a back. Now you have to bring your heels all the way down so you can do a brandy straight. It's extremely and, hard. It's not and impossible. Also, and also, so I, it, what happens is if you do a full twist, once something's in motion, it's going to stay in motion until you change shape. So if right. you finish the full and you don't pike, you're going to keep twisting. You're going to do a Rudy and back out. And what ha that's so that's what happens. So if you look at the Chinese, they do it a little bit that way, but they have so much power. They can, they're able to give so much speed that what happens is when they get to that point in time, they're not here anymore. They're already a little bit here. And then when the turn goes in, they just go Chinese turn at the end. Right. So I don't teach the full. The full, full I don't think I've seen the Chinese do full Bernie straight. The full, full straight. The same thing. Okay, they do full full straight with the same technique of the full brainy straight. Actually, I don't remember if I ever saw the full girls do straight, the full. But I don't think I've ever the, seen the boys doing full full straight. The girls, yeah, the girls do full full straight, right? And it's just like this. If you notice, it's just like this a little bit later, but it's just like this because they do from the same technique of the tuck and the pike, right? So I separate the techniques for me or for my athletes. They're totally different skills. And then I was going to start to explain, and I lost myself a little bit there. I learned everything through the brain in full out. And I didn't learn, I learned tuck and straight at the time. We didn't really do pike puck. at the time. Puck, exactly. And then whenever pike was a thing, I was already 20 years into my career. So I had to learn the pike later. And it was so hard, so hard, so hard to be able to go back and cut speed for the pike. It was extremely hard. And I never really did it in a way that kids do it nowadays. So as a coach, I changed my mindset. I changed my way of doing it. And I teach Tuck and, tuck and Pike full Brenny and Rudy and Full Fools. I'll do one and a half Brenny and I'll do the, 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 the straights, Brenny in full out and for the full, full in, full out, totally. And then with total control. So that's the reason why I don't put full in, full in half out straight. That's one reason because they don't do it at this time. They only do it later. I separate, so why? I give them why, time. But why, why pike first? Why, why straight later? Because of, the, because of the speed. Like I said, it's much easier to it's give easier more to... speed for the straight than cut speed for, to, to learn pike. So if I would start with the straight, let's say I could start mm -hmm. with the straight. I could start with the straight, right? I would start with the straight. It would be much harder for them to cut speed to go for the tuck of the pike. They would be over-rotating on the progressions all the time or over-rotating on the full skill all the time. And they would barely even be able to do, to do positions. And we see this. We see this happening a lot to these SMI athletes right, right now. They do the straight so easy because it's much easier for you to go faster than to actually stop speed and wait and go slower. It's so hard to go slower because you start yeah. asking yourself how much slower. Okay. And I and then yeah. another thing, sorry, just to finish the question, another thing why I do it is because I believe that the full brandy pike, it's way more controllable than the straight, okay? A good straight is awesome. I'm not going to, you know, I did, I did good straights and a lot of people do good straights, but the pike with the position allows you to have control. If you go too fast, if you go too slow, you can either stay pike for a little bit longer, you can kick out mm -hmm. earlier, you have more control. So whenever that skill goes out of the first place or right now it's there, but it's going to be way more in the middle or a nine skill or something like that, it's much controllable than the straights are. So I right. give a lot more importance. And especially I think the full, full pike, if we, which is one and a half brandy, but I call it full, full pike just because it's easier. There's really no I think good everyone does, yeah. It. It is, yeah. Some people call it really, really in half out, one and a half, half. I don't know. I prefer full, full pike. It's just easier to say. Um, that skill, I think, is going to be instrumental for the future. If you look at all the high level routines, that skill is a breather for you. And you put that skill wherever you need after trips, everywhere. It's so easy to control. And again, because it's in the pike position, because you get, you get the one and a half turn and then you get the pike and then you kick out wherever you need to kick out. Right. So that's the reason why pike and no straight. And, and I think also 
um, I think it's, it's easier to go. Well, if the athlete learns to spot through the entire thing, Branny, Cruz, Branny, it's going to be a lot scarier when they go full with a blind spot. Well, it's easier to go the opposite way that you don't see it. And then all of a sudden, Oh wow, I see everything. This is fine. So I yeah. think that also is, is part of the, the learning curve. And, and what I noticed, so I had some kids going through that process already and going to the straights, right? And what I noticed is it's much hard for them to understate the straight later because they see all the time, like you said, right? And like, oh, this skill is so easy. Yeah, it is. You know, it's a little bit the same, the same tactic that we apply with the Rudyard and the full brandy. We start with the harder one and then whenever they do the easy one, they're doing both at the same, both very close together and then we can put, we can use them all. Right, so it's a little bit of the same technique, but it's like the full, full straight and the full ready straight are two of the easiest skills to do ever, ever. Like a roller coaster, you like a roller coaster. And you just so, holding on. Yeah, fun. you do the initial movement, and then you just you just ride the skill. And yep. so, next question: Why not a triple? The athletes have two ready outs. Why not a tripus? I, I think it's a little bit too early. I think, I, I don't think after the full ready goes in, then we have all the forward skills we need for a proper forward skeleton with a triff. I think until that forward brain at full brandy goes there, we don't have all the skills. We, we, we haven't, we get, we didn't give experience to all the skills yet for the triff to go mm -hmm. in. Okay. Can the triff go in? Most likely it can, you know, some kids will probably be able to do a triff piece of cake at that age. Okay. But the question is, if you do the triff, then what do you do after that half out tuck? You're going to use the half out right. tuck. So it looks, it, it looks like I'm so awesome. I'm really not that awesome. Right. It's, it's just like yeah. a contradictory of, 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 of things. There's a lot of, you know, when I, when I put a triff, I want that four skeleton to be triff, full brandy, Rudy out, Rudy out, half out or Right. Even yep. or even full brandy, full brandy, Rudy out or uh, triff, full brandy, Rudy out pike, Rudy out tuck, full brandy tuck, for example, yep. something like that. I, no half out. Okay, I, I enjoy the half out pike a lot. Okay, I really do, but I don't want that half out tuck there anymore. That half out tuck needs to go away whenever I put the triff. I need to have other skills right. already routined enough to build a, a higher level forward skeleton. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think, I think it's, we have, at least with the way I was raised and the way I, I, I continue to teach in general rule of thumb is you learn all of the singles before the doubles and you learn all of the doubles before the singles before the and, and so before that the you become a master or sorry, before the triples. Yeah. So you become a master and you understand all of the movements, all of the twists in and out, all the different combinations before you start messing with triples. Because honestly, there's also, once you start doing a triple, there's another, you know, mental aspect to the game of the game that, that comes into play that you can do the triple so easy and the triples is so easy, but it's so easy to overthink, you know, one, two, and most of the time you'll never, you'll never mess up. Right. But there comes a time where the time you start to question yourself just a little bit during the triples. So, so I think that's a, a common time that everyone has the lost skill syndrome for the first time where they start learning drifts and then they can't do uh, Rudy outs because they, they just use the same speed of the trip that they use on the other skills. And then the timing of the, of the, of the, the twisting to go, passes and then they do two and threes instead of doing root outs or do two and threes instead of doing full brandies, right? That, that is very frequent. I think I lived through it. I think a lot of people lived through it, right? I think as a coach, that's something that I prepare my athletes to and I, and I always have them do half outs after they do trips so they understand the difference in speed. You know, takeoffs become very different whenever you learn the first trips. You do the first trips, then you want to do the same. You want to do half outs with the same power that you do the trips. It's not the way, it's not the way you should do it because that that's the that's the, the the first recipe for disaster. So I, as a coach, because I saw so many things in the past, I, I prepare my athletes to do all that. The same way that when they're learning Rudy outs, they never leave the trampoline without doing a half out. Half out is always the last thing they do when they're learning Rudy outs, like for the first six months. Okay, well, then when the Rudy outs go in the routines, then it's another game. Then it's not necessary anymore. They're, they already understand. They're learning how to separate the half outs from the Rudy outs. And with the trips, it's the same thing. You know, they'll do the first trip. They need to learn how to separate the trips from all the other, sp the other skills. And they all have different takeoffs and they all, all that. But what you just said is 
it's, 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 it's a very complicated problem. And I think that should probably be for another episode, how to, how to avoid those, those, uh, those um, stages of life, you know, how to avoid those lost skill syndrome stages, because I think everyone is different, no doubt. We yeah. all have our own problems, no doubt, but there are certain problems that are similar to everyone. And this is one of them, I think. This is one of them. The first Rudy out yeah. is one of them. Uh, and I think we can help a little bit with that. Uh, so far, knock on wood, I, don't, I didn't have any athletes that went through those through those problems and they're all doing drifts and, and never had problems. And I want to believe it's because of the way that, or, or the, the things that I do, the protocols that I put in place on my training to avoid those things. I want to believe that. That's what all the, we all want to believe, right? Of course. Of course. Otherwise um, we wouldn't be doing our jobs. <laughs> I think it's right. There's so many variables that go into it, right? The, the, the protocols, the, even though I think the, the culture and the way you speak to the athletes, yep. you know, plays an important role. Their anxiety levels, their, their relationship with the coaches and their teammates. Why, you know, how do they, do they see their teammates do the skill before? Or are they the first one to do it in their group, right? There's, there's mm -hmm. so many vi variables that go into it that us as coaches need to look at. And the, the, I feel like the, the drills and stuff are a heavy weight on, on how they do, but there's also many other things as a coach, right? We wear many hats, psychiatrist, right? Uh, friends, psychologist, uh, psychologist. Not, you know, coach, teacher, right? There's so many different, different things. All right. So, Let's take a look at your next uh, full Branny routine, and then we'll take a peek at what I have. All right, so we left off with optional number three over here on your mm -hmm. document, Nuno, with the uh, full Branny and the layout second. So let's take a peek. Why don't you tell us um, optional four and what the intentions are and, and what, what progressed? So an optional four, so this is, this is what we just said, right? The optional three goes down a lot to, to get that full brain in there. And then optional four comes and catches up a little bit of what the optional three already had done, right? And then um, uh, after looking at optional four, now I remember also a reason why I put that half-half on, on fourth skill on optional two, and that will be to, to, to prepare for optional four here. So optional four goes like this. Full brainy pike, half-half pike, Rudy out pike, double tuck, Rudy out tuck, half half tuck, half out pike, double pike, half out tuck, and then either half Rudy or full full tuck or pike, depending on what or they still, have. Or double A. Or still double A. Or every, still yeah. double A. Yeah. Um, right. But if, if we see, yeah. if you analyze, you can see a lot of things here that we grab from other routines, right? We go back to put the half half pike on second skill. We go back to put the double tuck in the middle of the Rudy outs like we put on optional three which we had mm -hmm. to change because the full brandy gets in. So all the forward skeleton can, can push down one skill. So all the, the, the connections with the, backwards, with the backwards skills also shift as well, right? So we had to rebuild that connection on optional three. And then we put back the half-half connection after the Rudy out tuck, which was on optional two, right? And then from that point on, half out pike, double, uh, double pike, half out tuck. It's a connection that we've been doing already for a while in the past, since the beginning. And the, uh, the last skill is whatever last skill they can do, I guess, because right. uh, I would prefer, I would prefer a full, full here. There's no doubt. I would prefer either full, full tuck or pike at this point, but that doesn't mean that they're going to be able to do it. I, that was, that would be my preference. That doesn't mean that they'll be able to do it. It might have to be a double leg. Mm -hmm. So my, my question is right. So we, they trained the half out, half and half out, half out, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Why not, why not just keep it there and, and do the double pike? It, it's uh, possible. Six. And put the double pike after six. Yeah, that's, that's also yeah. possible. That's also possible. But at this point, Stephen, if you look, they did both things. They did the Rudy, they did the half half after the Rudy out tuck on optional two, and they did the half half after half right. out on optional three. Right. So optional at one, this yeah. point, uh, oh, no, optional, no, no, two one, optional two right there. Yeah. So, at this point, they're ready for that half half to go mm -hmm. wherever you need it to go, right? So yeah. you can you you. This is what we were just talking about. You see which one was his best connection? Was that half half coming off the Rudy out or that half half coming off the half out? Logically, it would be coming off the half out. Logically, okay, for us, mm -hmm. but everyone is different, right? So you can put it wherever you want on half out on optional four, right? Yeah, I think my, my routine's going to take a, a peek here. I think I try to keep that half out, half and half out, 
half out consistently throughout. Consistently throughout um, the whole the whole thing. See, yeah, that's again. There's nothing wrong with it. I I think at this stage it's very important for them to keep switching places, and we see yeah. where where it it, it but, it's best for them. Okay. Like, but, like I said, I have just an example. Of those three three youth elite girls, two are doing mm -hmm. full brannies. One yeah. just now has now started to do her full, full branny routine, but every single one of them are doing different routines. They're all, they all have the half and half out in different spots. It, it, and it's, it's just because some are stronger at the beginning. Some are, you know, have better stamina and can hold exactly. their height better to the end. Exactly. Some have Rudy outs that finish really late. Some have Rudy outs that open and finish really early and they have ton of time to spot. So that is you know, I think, I think, I think it, it's dependent um, on the, the athletes, but I think one thing that doesn't change here is the front skeleton, yep. right? The front skeleton stays the full brandy, Rudy out, Rudy out, the half out, and then the half out. Yeah. All right. So and, and I wouldn't yeah. be, I wouldn't be against if they would put the full brandy tuck there instead of the Rudy out tuck. I wouldn't be against, okay? That, that they, if, yeah. if they learn full brainies first, then maybe the full brain tuck is better than the root yacht tuck, okay? It's, it's normal. But if they start with the root yacht, most likely the root yacht tuck will be better than the full brainy. I guess it really will depend on the athlete here. I don't think, but I think it's, what, what I think is important, what we just talked, is the consistency of maintaining that forward skeleton the same. That's what I really think is important here. And I, I think... Um... Well, I, I lost my train of thought. All right, so let's take let's take a. Uh, a Can I see optional five? Before. I think yep. I'm not. So I don't know to, if I. Go I think go to trip. So let's 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 skip that one for part for part five, okay? And uh, or for part four, I don't know what part we are anymore, but it doesn't matter. And let's pick at yours. All right, so here is my first full brandy routine. Uh, we went over with full brandy back pike, Rudy out the back, Rudy out. Um, so they have that double between the Rudy outs, then they have another little break and then they have that half out, half and half out, half out, double A. Mm -hmm. Um, and on this piece, like I said, the half out, half and half out, half out, I'll try to keep consistently, um, throughout their, their next few routines. Um, here's the skeleton, right? With the back pikes. I like to do back, you can do back pikes or back layouts. I wouldn't recommend doing back tucks to, I mean, yeah. I know I, you can do layouts. I'd recommend doing back pikes, maybe back tucks. The layouts I, are I more. I do all of them to, to be whip. honest. I probably um, write back straights more, but in the end I do all of them. So one day I'm like, okay, today I want the four skeletons with back pike or today I want with back tuck. And they, they keep changing consistently through all of them because I, I really think it's very important for them to be able to do it with all of them. Yeah. That's, that's true. Being again, being exposed to, to everything. All right. So here, um, and I think honestly, I skipped a routine because we do a routine with the back pike second. Mm -hmm. um, but here, I was trying to follow the same style or flow, right? So mm -hmm. branding double back, Rudy out, and then a rest on the fourth. Um, Rudy and, and, out, and, layout, and, and then the same ending. Yeah. And, and I, don't get me wrong. Sometimes they would skip that back there. You know, if the full yeah. brain is really that good and, and, and sometimes the connection for a double tuck pushes them to do a little bit better connection. Okay, double tuck is a skill that they've done for a long time. And I've seen mm -hmm. many of my athletes, when I ask them to do um, Rudy out back, Rudy out, they do it worse than they do Rudy out double Rudy out because the double requires a strength on the bed that the back sometimes doesn't, right? So it, it's mentally it's challenging for them and they do it better than they do, do it with the back only. Okay. So I, I could see some athletes doing what you just did there, you know, going straight from the full brain to the double. I would still, again, they still do full brain back or they do it on forward skeletons. So right. there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. And I, it, and honestly, I think depends on how, how prepared they are for that full brainy mm -hmm. uh, coming out of that brainy. If it's, connecting very well yeah, it might exactly. be pretty easy it's a similar exactly. ending to the half out right so in the next routine i'm just filling in some back skills right yep. before we had a fourth skill was a um layout now we're at a double pike so we go for brandy double tuck rudy out pike double pike um rudy out tuck a little break because they just did five doubles yep. in a row and then the same ending half out half and half out half out double yep. layout um and then 
Let's take a peek. The next one, next we incorporate the half and half out. They've been yep. exposed to doing that double back second skill. Um, and then we go back to the, the break on the fourth place, uh, fourth uh, skill. They'll do full branny, half and half out, Rudy out pike, lay out, Rudy out tuck, double back tuck, half out tuck, half and half out tuck, half out tuck, double lay or full full, which is kind of like what we, the same routine, except I think we have half and half out t uh, and double tuck switch here and there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yep. At this point, the doubles are almost maxed out. Trip should be practiced. And then here's their first uh, 10 double routine. Yep. They go full Bernie Pike, half and half out Pike, Rudy out Pike, double back tuck, Rudy out tuck, double back Pike, half out Pike, half and half out tuck, half out tuck, and then either double A or full full. Um, I teach full full Pike. I teach full full tuck and full half tuck, but honestly, the men probably won't use this skill too much. The women, the women who don't have as many triples might have they to might. utilize that skill. Yep. So it depends also on the gender. Um, if they're doing full full tuck more or less, yeah. um, I just think I just think the full full pike is a little bit hard for them to start with in the beginning, especially the girls. Okay, especially the girls. The, the boys yeah. can probably do, it. but even the boys, depending how powerful they are at this stage, I think they go through puberty here. You know, it's very. It's sometimes they don't. They're not very strong, and the uh, the full full tuck is a good skill to end sometimes. But mm -hmm. if they're ready for the pike, I prefer the pike. Obviously, right? It's a cleaner skill. Yeah. Um. And this 13-1 with full, full pike, or I did it uh, with half and Rudy out pike, was, I don't know, it was a milestone for me. I remember doing 10 doubles and reaching 13. That number 13 was like, now I made it to the big times. This is, you yeah. know, this is huge. This is not like a, a little routine anymore. So um, I feel like this this routine right here is is a very important routine. Um, the athletes learn 10 doubles. Uh, the athletes have multiple different connections, twisting to non-twisting, twisting to twisting. Um, and it's, I think all of these connections are going to be in, in, included in their future routine somewhere. All right. So let's just do my next routine here is trip tuck. So let's take, uh, I think let's stop it there. So, but before we stop, I got a quick question for you and I've seen a lot of athletes doing this. Um, why do you put full Bernie Pike first? And they've been doing real pikes. Why don't they put the full Bernie third? Oh, good question. Um, well, honestly, because the Rudy out pike is born more, has been more trained from the beginning. So it, it's easier to get the connection there, I think. And then, um, the full Bernie, I don't know if it would be read to go third with, with the experience that it has. I think it's, it's not so easy to, to connect a full brand with a previous skill. It's much easier to rush. It's much easier to, 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 to do incorrectly, if you want to say it that way. And the Rudy out pike has the same takeoff of a half out pike. So it's, it's easier to transition in the middle. Uh, the mm -hmm. full brand not so easy, I think. But um, I was thinking, what if you start with the full brandies instead of starting with the Rudy outs? Would you still put the full brand in the beginning? Because then the full brandy was more trained than the Rudy out, right? So, but I would still put the full brand in the beginning. It's just, it's also that expectation from the judge's point, to, point of view of what they're expecting on a routine. And that, in my opinion, a full brandy is much prettier when it's on first skill than it's on, on third skill, unless you have a triff. If you have a triff, then yeah, but uh, if you don't have a trip, third, so right, yeah, so the full branding won't be first forever. I think, it, we, I think another, another point is at this level, the athlete has to remain straight for a longer amount of time in a full branny. They have to stay straight for just about three quarters of a flip yep. and then for half of a flip. So they're doing five of the eight quarters in a straight position, whereas the Rudy out pike they're pretty much opening between either two to three quarters, but they're piked yeah. almost, you know, uh, five quarters, five to six quarters of that double. So they can hold on longer and adjust a little bit easier. I think like so. I think so. about with the full Bernie straight versus the full Bernie pike. Yeah. Um, no, no, these it's, it's interesting now that we, we start having these thoughts. If the full Bernie was top first, right. Would it, would it still go here? Right. You, exactly. How, how, how often are, are you changing your routines or changing your minds here? So th that's an interesting point. So I, I, I don't change them very often, but 
but I do adapt them <laughs> very often. So, uh, for example, and even today, we're talking about that half-half, right? And I'm, 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 I'm putting my athletes going through those routines, and I'm like, ooh, okay, you know what? For that one, I'm, I'm going to have to switch that double tuck over there. But for the other one, I might keep that, be able to keep the half-half over there. So I think it's important for all the coaches to, ke- to keep an open mind. And, you know, even sometimes talking with other coaches, or even when someone asks us these questions, it puts us thinking like, okay, what can I do to optimize my routines? You know, there may be something that I can do to optimize my routine. So maybe next week I'll get back on the gym and I'll uh, look at the routines again, like, oh, okay, let me make a switch here or add this here or, but so they don't change fundamentally. So the forward skeleton will stay the same and all that, but I might have some adjustments of, of, of skills of double tucks and half halves or something like that change. And most of all, and I think that's the most important of, of it all, I might create even more routines in the middle that I don't write that they do in practice because I keep looking at our routines and your, uh, my routines and your routines. And I'm like, hmm, Maybe there are certain steps that we can still even do better than that. You know, there's like connections that of two and three elements that we do that we did not write. For example, when they do the half half for the first time, they don't go and put the half half in the middle with 10 skills. They start with back half out, half half to the mat and back half out, half half, half out to the mat. Right. They, all those little things that we already do that they're not in the routines. We, we, I, mine are basically like you, you can compete these routines basically you how do you get there right. I don't give you I don't give you everything how to get there yet but maybe that's something that I should put on paper too for example I don't know but I to answer your question they don't change very frequently but they're seven they're certainly a dynamic document that are allowed to be changed they're not uh, um, how do you say uh mandatory document that gets no change over the over time They're not set in stone not set in stone yeah yeah all do right you change yours yeah. do you change yours all, uh, um i do or? i do but i think i work off of these routines and then start adapting to the athletes right and i think i th- and i think i have to put a little more thought into to what is set in stone for me and what is not and i think What is set in stone is the front skeleton. I think that's things I stick to. Those same order of front skills, the only thing that I start changing is the back skills. And I don't know why. You know, I have to think about that too. Why? Why? Is that just a bias? Because that's what everyone does and that's what I've done for so long. And now I'm just... You falling but I think into, it has. I think it has or... to do with that. I think it has to do with what is expected of a routine. It's as simple as that. You know, what are what are what do we ourselves look at the routine and expect that is a routine? What do the judges expect of a routine? Right? You you look at internationally, 13, 14 years old, and how many kids start with Rudyard instead of the full Brandy? Right, and that that automatically yeah. creates a bias on you, and you're like, okay, wait, it clearly this is judged correctly a little bit like that nine one routine the four doubles mm-hmm. with the double a in the end right that's a that's a routine that is very well judged right so this yep. is the same thing if we start with the rudy out in the put the full brain later it's not the same visual right and i think and i think not only the same visual but i think subconsciously the judges might see let's say the athlete does two rudy outs in the beginning and then half out and then they put full brandy ninth regardless of how good the, the, the skill, the athlete does the skill, the judges might think, Oh, wow, it's a hard skill. There's no way that's a zero. That's going to be a two tenth deduction. Right. And it, they're not supposed to. Right. And I don't think they do it intentionally, but it's just, if you've been exposed to the sport for so long, then, you know, there's a 90% chance if you're doing a full brandy ninth, and that's one of your hardest skills that you know, or the hardest skill you know how to do, there's no way it's going to be a and, zero and tenth think, deduction, right? So, and the same thing happens with Rudy Outs at 10 skills, like I've seen recently, okay? And I think it goes a little bit like this. Backward skills, we put at, we put in the end, okay? Because backward skills... It's, it's okay if you land with your short down or, or with your chest down or a little bit short on the skill. I, I, I feel like that's not a huge problem. Right. Now, putting forward skills at the end that you still land with your, I don't think it's helping you with that skill in any way that then whenever it needs to go to the beginning, it makes it better. Okay, that is a skill that can go to the beginning and you can land it already better than what if you land it if you were at the end, in my opinion, right? It just- Have you seen that? Rudy out 10th skill? Yes. 
it's and then I can tell you when when it happens. Okay, it simply happens when this athlete needs to mobilize and they need a difficulty, and they can't connect the root yacht yet. So they put that last skill because there's no connection after that, right? So then I think you have to ask yourself: Is that athlete actually ready to mobilize? Then that is the that that Stephen is the right and, question. And and is it is it beneficial or detrimental to the career if you push them? to to a level that they're not ready for and maybe if they took a year back then they would progress much faster right i think i think all the things need to be weighted here and that's a conversation for another place right but or for another time but uh, it may be the situation that that's the last time that athlete can can mobilize to that level right after that it will have to do a different routine that they're not even close to be ready because if they're not close to be ready to do this routine or if they're very close to be ready to this routine but then the next one is going to be even harder right it's do you try to mobilize it here and then they're not competitive on the next steps here and they're just catching up catching up and then they will we're going to end up but they're still elites right? They consider themselves elites because if they don't mobilize here, then you won't mobilize there. And then you're never an elite in your life. And you know that for some athletes in our country, being an elite is a huge step for them, right? It doesn't matter if they're ready or not. Just the fact that they're called elites, it's a huge step for them. So that's something that is the role of the coach to prepare those athletes for that moment. They're either ready or they're not ready. Simple as that. Absolutely. All right. Well, this one took a little while and we thank you for bearing with us and we still got more to go. We hope you guys are enjoying um, this routine composition. We think it's a very important um, aspect of, of as a coach and athletes um, career. And um, we, we hope that you guys are enjoying it. And, and if you are, aren't, let us know, give us feedback. Um, and hopefully you guys are enjoying it so we can continue to, to some more parts and into some senior elite routines. So you guys can reach out to us um, on Facebook. You can also reach us uh, by emailing us. Our email is trampolineinsight at gmail.com. You can also reach us on social media on Twitter at Tramp Insight or on Instagram at Trampoline Insight. You can also send us a voice message with questions or opinions uh, by following the link in the episode description. Thank you guys for listening. We hope you guys learned something. We hope you guys enjoyed it. And we look forward to seeing you guys on the next episode. Bye, guys.